What is up, you Lit fans? This is a very special video showcasing a great friend of mine, Chris Pollock. Now, you might be saying, Britt, we've seen his stuff before. You've already shown it off. Well, there's a reason for that. Uh, this past November, about mid-November, one day his phone just, he turned off his phone. And it's been off ever since. He has had no online presence at all. Uh, talking to some of his friends and co-workers online, they said one day he came into work, basically grabbed a few things and left. And ever since then, really nobody has heard from him or know his whereabouts. We know he's okay. A couple people got Christmas cards from him, but of course you're probably saying, well, you can just look at the return address. He put on a false return address on there. So, we don't know where he's at. And I wanna do this video for him and for people who know his work. And if you've never seen his work, but heard about his work, the one thing that everybody agrees on, it is excellent, it is perfect, and very much in detail with everything that he puts into his props. So super detailed stuff. And I do wanna say this, if Chris is watching this, I wanna tell you that your friends and your family, we miss you, we love you, we hope you're doing great, and we hope to see you again sometime whenever you're, uh, you're up to it. So with that being said, let's check out the work of Chris Pollock. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is Chris Pollock's Friday the 13th Part 5 mask. Now he made different masks back in the day. He had a mold of a mold of the original pulls from different parts of the series, different movies. He didn't have a part five. So he bought this high end mask. I can't remember who did it. I think it was a, from a person who actually made him for, for part five. But what Chris did with this is he completely repainted it. Chevrons and everything to get just the right color, right kind of grit. So all of this grit has all been repainted by Chris. And even on the back, he had to reposition a mounting hole because it was in the wrong spot. So he took that out and placed it in the right position. And the person who played Trina in part five did sign this for me when I was down in Chicago during one of those uh, horror conventions. But Chris did this for me because at his old tattoo shop he used to work at, he had his on the wall and I just loved it. And part five is my favorite. I know it's not everybody's favorite because it wasn't Jason, but I thought the whole story was good. I really, really enjoyed part five. So he did this for me for free because he's my friend. And this is one piece I've been asked to sell a few times. And every time they ask me, I say no, because it's absolutely beautiful. A lot of times when you see these part fives, they really darken it in with the burnt siennas and, and regular sienna paint colors. So they'll be super red and uh, no. <laughs> uh, you got to remember when you're filming, there is saturation added a lot of times to the film. So to darken this up with really dark siennas would really kind of take away the look of the mask, but it's kind of up to you on your preference, but Chris did this as accurate as possible. And I still think this is, if not the best, one of the best part five mask paint jobs and uh, refurbishments that's ever been done. Another thing he did is add the proper straps onto this and he had the right buckle and actually weathered the buckle. So he went a lot further than if you would just buy this online from a company that had the license. So he bought a license piece and redid it to make it more accurate. So it's a beautiful piece and it's my favorite, favorite Friday the 13th movie. So I will always keep this in my collection. The next thing I'm gonna show right now is his Army of Darkness grill. Now, Chris sculpted this himself. This is the one that he sent me. He used some high-end resin. It's got a metallic powder in it, so it reduces on the shrinkage. 
but he put a lot of detail into it. He studied it quite a bit to make it just right, showing all the dings and everything that the chainsaw went through during filming. And it is the most accurate one out there. Unfortunately, with Chris gone, wherever he is, these are not being made anymore. So I'm glad to have this one. I actually have a couple in my collection that I still have. And I do plan on making a mold of this just to keep this still relevant. I do not plan on selling them. So do, don't ask me when, when I make the mold because I won't sell them. I am gonna give them out to a few friends who need them for projects that were friends of Chris's. So I think Chris would be happy that I wouldn't charge him for it. I mean, look how it's short on this side. It's very skinny, short and skinny. And then it gets thick right here. So Chris did it really, really well. He studied it quite a bit and the placement of it on the chainsaws. So yeah, I'm gonna make a mold and I have a few friends who need them for projects that were friends of Chris's and actually still are friends of Chris's, but they're in the same boat as me. We can't find them. So I won't charge them for this. So I will not sell these, but I will make some, I'll drop it for uh, some people that need it. Let's talk about the chainsaw. So here's Chris Pollock's Evil Dead 2 raised top. I've done a video with Chris before about this chainsaw, but I will really wanna go over a lot of things that he did to show off more details than I've ever done before or even in that video. One thing I'm gonna show you first is ED2 grill. And you can see the EOD is different. This one's more banged up, more beaten, while this one is a little bit cleaner. And it is absolutely incredible. I remember when he first did the first version, I think this was the, he did a version before this, then did this version, and then he came out with this one for the AOD. But you can see it, there is a difference. So if you're thinking you're gonna get all the details right, and you have one of Chris's grills, so you got the AOD and you're doing ED2 and you put the, this grill on there, it's not quite right. This is the one you want. And I have one and that's the one I got and it's gonna stay on that chainsaw. On the pull cord, we have the knot right here. This is non-working, of course. He didn't put an inside shield to hide your hand on the inside. And the reason for that is they never did that. The only reason I do that on mine, especially Ash versus, Ash versus Evil Dead, and in Ash versus Evil Dead, they do cover it up, but in ED2 and Army of Darkness, they didn't, it was just wide open. Pull cord one inch cord or one inch piece of wood right here. There is a different size you can see on the flat top and the work shed scene. So, but for the raised top, it's the right size. Let's look at the details over on this side. We have the hole, we have the strapping right here. And this one does have a corner cut. I always thought that was wrong, but there was one that had a straight cut right here. If you look at the top, this is made of actual metal. This is These actually have real welds put onto them. Let's see if I can get a good shot for you. And this panel right here is correct with the ED2 chainsaw. So he made sure he put that on there. And also this bar piece that comes down from the top that's welded in, it should extend down to here but he had to extend the here, which is perfectly fine. It's just cosmetic. Let's look at the inside, if we can see it. Here we go. As you can see, the handle is a vertical handle. It's over here. It's this black piece right here. And he made it into almost a gun handle kind of, kind of piece for me. He used a steel stick to sculpt that. And he just ran it and connects it over to this side over here with the motor bracket. Let's turn it some more. Let's talk about the wrist cuff. I think this originally was for a guy named Cody, I'm guessing. Uh, this is one he gave me with this chainsaw. I think he made a couple of them and the one for Cody and the one for me was exactly the same because Chris is a perfectionist. 
So what these are, everybody asks what this is. It's a clamp for an exhaust that goes on a car or a truck. You can still buy these, but they're not made anymore like it was in ED2. Chris handmade all of these. He would buy the clamp piece right here, and then he would build. He would actually roll the metal to make this piece. He was the first one who ever did it out of just a piece of metal. Like I made one out of a coffee can. You had uh, uh, Evil Dead chainsaws. They had a mold of one, or a, they made out of a mold, which it was resin or something like that. But Chris was really the innovator who came up with everything out of metal. Now, if you go out and you buy one from, let's say, eBay or something, and it's uh, for a actual exhaust, you're not gonna get these bends like this. They're a little closer and they are now thicker. They're not gonna be the same. Trust me, I bought one, it didn't work. The one thing Chris would do with this nut, it's an aircraft nut is what they are. Chris would get a nut, get a washer, put them together, and you actually drill out these holes. Because if you remember the build scene, it had holes in it. So Chris would actually drill those out. And he actually injured himself a few times doing that. He put the right piece right here, which connects the top to the body. And that's where that bend comes in at the bottom. And you can see right here, the uh, switch, on off switch. So that is correct too. Now the muffler does change in ED2 from chainsaw to chainsaw, but this is when Chris put on this one and I was like, no, that's just for the flat top. And he's like, no, and he would show me photos and, and he, he's hundred percent correct. One thing you'll see here is these welded on tabs because these are welded on. And I'm assuming they were used for brackets, the whole thing's on probably this and maybe the hold on the bar over here with this bracket. Chris put them on there for cosmetics because he actually put a shaved down motor piece on the inside, which wasn't on the original ED2, you know, the one you saw in the movie. They didn't really have anything there. It was just, you know, the bar was put on there onto a bracket to make it run. It didn't have the motor piece covering anything up. Another thing you'll notice, let's pull it back a little bit and move the camera up, is how thick the metal is for the handle. Now that is correct to the flat top and it was taken from the flat top to this specific type of raised top in Evil Dead 2. And you'll see it also in Army of Darkness as well. And there is one that has the thinner metal here. And this is aluminum. And Chris would specially order that aluminum specifically to make these top handles. And you see right here, he would put these in to the wood. He would actually do that on purpose because the flat top scene with this specific handle had this removed wood. So he would do that for accuracy. Chris designed this front after when Henrietta knocked Ash through the stairs. It has a little bit of a curve up here while when he comes out of the cellar, there is a chainsaw that has welds on the top here. So he didn't put that in. And he didn't know that till later after I pointed that out, there was a, there was a one top that had a weld across the front. But this is, this is accurate to Evil Dead 2. Let's check out the bar. This is what's called a kick-up bar. It has not the regular round front shape. It kind of comes up and scoops up a bit. And a kick-up chain or a kick-out chain or something like that. But he cut these little fins correctly to make it the exact chain used in Evil Dead 2 because these bars and chains are hard to find because they're now obsolete. So they don't sell them anymore. I mean, you can find them here and there, but not very often. Now let's look at the bottom. We got that bolt holding this on here, this bracket. There is a bolt here, so that was added. No bolts here. And this is something Chris talked about for a long time. He made this weird kind of funky bolt thingy and it looked like a speed nut. And 
So I put the speed nut on there because I still think it's a speed nut. So if Chris, you're watching, I still say it's a speed nut, buddy. But, uh, you know, it's just, you know, potatoes and potatoes. So I put the speed nut in here. And what a speed nut is, is basically you can put a, put a bolt through it and we'll close it in without having to, you know, hold both ends together to tighten it down. Since so you put it in, it, it's pushed against something so it doesn't move and that's a speed nut. But again, Chris did weld these tops. This is solid steel. This thing has weight to it and it looks really good. I mean, people are gonna say, well, that's funky, but every bend that Chris put into this, every little funky little bit is something he meant to do. And it is absolutely perfect. And again, this is a piece I'll never part with because it is the best Evil Dead 2 race top ever built. If you got one from Chris, thank your lucky stars that you have one because nobody's gonna do it as good as Chris again. He did it as accurate as possible. And what I mean by that is even the weight of how heavy, like when you hear Bruce Campbell talk about how they were heavy, this, it's heavy. It's got weight to it. So it's never gonna be this good again. Another thing that Chris would even strove to do for accuracy is get the washer and bolts right here correct and that extra hole that came from the flat top. I mean, Chris was a, a master at his craft and he still is. I don't know if he's building anything anymore. Again, nobody knows where he's at, but hopefully he comes back and uh, starts building stuff again. But after I got this from Chris, I did the paint on it. Chris did some paint uh, or some paint work on the ones that he did for other customers and it was just incredible. So you'll notice the darker tone of the red here versus the body. And the thing is, the older this thing gets, the darker it gets and that's what it's supposed to do. So you can see, if you look at my old videos, you can see this isn't as prominent, the original red of the body versus the spray paint. But the older it gets, the more it turns into the proper color. So that's why I painted it the way I did. But yeah, Chris, Chris really knew what he was doing. He would spend hours and hours and hours working on his stuff and making it perfect. And Chris, well, to this day, I will tell you what is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. I mean, he is, I will tell you this, in a group of friends, you can always count him in to have your back and you can look at him and say, that boy is my best friend. Even if you have multiple best friends, Chris is in that group of best friends. Trust me on that. And before I go right here, Chris actually heated up this right here because there is an upper bend uh, right in the body where the caps are and he put the caps in properly and it's not how they're supposed to sit in the chainsaw, but for Evil Dead 2 they are. They're actually just kind of shoved in there. So Chris did that, absolutely perfect. And even on the back, you can see the same. So he had to heat this up, bend that up. He actually had to go on the other side and heat this up and bend the body down and he actually had to heat this up a little bit and straighten that out. So there's a lot of modifications he did to this. So this is Chris Pollock's Evil Dead 2 chainsaw. So there you have it. Some of the best work done by any person that ever existed on this earth. My good friend, Chris Pollock. All the way from Friday the 13th Mask, part five still my fave, to Army of Darkness, The Grill, and also his Evil Dead 2 race top and his flat top is perfect as well. Now, with this video, I am going to include some people who want to mention things about him, talk about him, and how much they appreciate his work and what he has done. I'm gonna show off some of the videos that I have with him, with me, and also other friends of ours, and a few, just, just few photos that I have of the times I spent with him and with other friends of ours as well. And I do have a message for Chris before I go. And this was given to me by his daughter, Lily. And she gave me the permission to say this, that 
she hopes to see you again and congratulations to one of the best people on this earth. Chris, you're gonna be a grandfather in June. And I am so proud of you. With everything you've ever done, you have never let me down. You have never let anybody else down. You've always been there for everybody. And it's really cool to see that you're, it's really cool to see your lineage passed on and your influence on how you build stuff and how you make things and just how you make us better as builders, which you've made me a better builder. And I've told you that a million times. If you're watching this, Chris, I've told you that and you know that. And how you just make life better for everybody else. And you've always put everybody else first. But I want to tell you, thank you for being my friend. And you will always be my friend. And congratulations on being a grandfather. So with that being said, let's check out some people who want to talk about Chris and how they um, knew Chris, met Chris, affected, his, affected their lives. And the best way to end this part is... Now you guys, and Chris, God bless you and stay groovy. Hey Knights and Evil Dead fans, what's going on? It's Al. I just wanted to take two minutes to talk about Chris Pollock because that's somebody that doesn't always get the same level of recognition and credit that Kurt, myself, Brett, and some of the guys get. Um, but Chris has been there pretty much since the Jump Street beginning of the Knights of Samaria. In fact, the very logo on the t-shirts we wear was designed by Chris, he used his tattoo background. But he also brought his background working in the special effects industry to a lot of what we did in replicating and allowed us to improve and make our props even better. He's always been super generous with his time and uh, it's always been fun to try to talk about props with Chris because pretty much any conversation with Chris is going to devolve into a conversation about the movie Best of the Best. But um, I want to take two minutes to make sure that we give a little bit of love to a guy who's been just an absolute blood flow pumping part of this, the heart of this team, and uh, hope everything is going well with everybody, and cheers to Chris. Hey Chris, I hope you see this man. Uh, I know I've said it many times before, and I want to say it again, I, I appreciate everything you've done for me, and, and the people that you've introduced me to, and how you've kickstarted my art career. I really appreciate it, and from the bottom of my heart, I love you man. I hope to see you again. Without a doubt in my mind, Chris has got to be, hands down, the funniest person I've ever met in my entire life. And alongside that, he is the most talented. He's got just such a wide variety of stuff that he does, stuff that he makes and builds, stuff that he's worked on. It's super impressive. And ever since the day that I first met him, he has always ensured that I felt welcome. And he, he absolutely succeeded in that. Because when we first met, which was in Chicago way back in the summer of 2021, it was my first time being at a convention at a state, um, being at a convention for the entire weekend. Uh, he really made sure that I felt welcomed among the, uh, the, the Knights of Samaria. And he, he truly succeeded. If it weren't for him, I really wouldn't have had the amount of fun that I had with that group that weekend. And just, I, I met him on such a sudden notice. And just from right then and there, he was just immediately a fantastic friend. And I'm just super grateful that I got to meet him. I. He's had, he's told me stories, you know, till the cows come home about all the stuff that he's done in the special effects industry. And I'm just, I'm truly grateful to uh, been able to have met him and consider him a friend. I miss you, man. I miss you, man. Drop some people a line or something. Get back to us. Cause, uh, you're my boy, you're a family, and um, not only is your actual family looking for you, but uh, at the same time, your surrogate family, which I consider myself one of them, wants you to, uh, I don't know, drop a line, send a text message, 
something. That'd be great. Why don't you give that a go, brother? We want to hear from you. And we love you, man. Hey, Chris. We just... Me and Holly wanted to take a second and tell you how much we love you, buddy. And how much we miss you. And we hope that you're doing okay. Um, we're praying for you, bud. Um, we hope that you're doing good. Um, we all miss you, man. Um, we just... We hope that somebody hears from you soon. We hope that you reach out to somebody. Um, we just, we miss you, man. We love you. Chris was always one of the, is one of the most welcoming, and he's he'd do anything for anybody, anything to help him out, put himself out to help somebody. Um, we just love you, bud. We miss you. We hope you're doing good, and we hope to hear from you soon. We love you, buddy. Bye. Why I love Chris Pollock in under a minute. Number one, one of the most hilarious dudes you're ever going to meet. The laugh alone, if you've ever heard it, especially in person, you hear it from everywhere and it's one of the greatest things you've ever heard. Number two, the guy's genius, quite the builder, and the sense of humor on the dude is unlike anybody else's. Some of the stuff that comes out of him, you think, where did that come from? Amazing. And the third reason, uh, when we met him, him and my wife got into talking about their shared love for David Bowie. Quickly, he came over to me and said, I've got the best idea for her birthday gift next year. And I said, okay, perfect. So let me know when it's coming. And it was the following July, almost a year later. And sure enough, June rolls around. Chris sends me a message and he's like, all right, I'm all ready to go with the gift. And I'm going to get it ready and I'm going to send it off. And he's like, you're going to look like a superhero. I had almost pretty much myself forgot about it. Chris didn't. That's the kind of guy he is. So then that birthday that year shows up in the mail and he had Bowie's face, like life mask, unbelievable. So she hangs that on her wall now and it is the coolest gift anybody has ever given anybody. I made sure he got credit for it because during that process, he also dropped his mold for it and broke it. So he sourced another one to get it done, all for us to be a nice guy. Allie and I love him. Ish Chris. Hi there, my name is Chris with a K and I just wanted to make a quick video um, that's basically an appreciation for someone very close to me that's in the horror community and even more specifically the Evil Dead community. And that is my buddy, Chris Pollock. Chris Pollock is one of the nicest guys I've ever met and someone who I not only have the privilege of calling a close friend of mine, but family. I basically consider him like an older brother. I genuinely really love him and care about him so freaking much, and he's so awesome. He's as ridiculously awesome, hilarious, and talented, and kind as he is also a little nuts, and if you know him, you know exactly what I mean. But I just wanted to say real quick how much I love him and miss him, and I hope he's doing well. And he's, again, he's so freaking talented. Like, he... He makes chainsaws based off of Ash Williams from the Evil Dead franchise down to the finest, teeniest, tiniest detail from like scratch marks to oil stains and everything going frame by frame, scene by scene in the movies to get the details just so accurate to the point where, you know, people who worked on the films would swear that he like somehow got a hold of an original chainsaw. And as a testament to how nice he is, he custom made something for me and didn't even charge me and uh it's a replica a prop replica of the terror mask from the spider house video games which i have with me right here and he went all out using as many references as he could to a specific version of the mask to get every single detail detail down exactly and i'm super appreciative of this so chris if you're watching this i just want to say thank you so much for this and all that you've done for being a close friend and basically a brother. I love you, I miss you, and I hope you're doing groovy. <laughs> it's not on your foot, so I don't know what that is. 
He said there's already furries lined up at the convention center. Oh, yeah. I'm not going. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm not going. Fuck that. Get him. Oh, I told it to him during a, a video of that audio call. I said, yeah, we'll call you. Hey, Chris. So, where? Okay. Don't you fucking get short with me. Oh, oh you know, look. <laughs> like, I, like I fucking told you, okay? You do good work. <laughs> oh, really? Really? What are you doing here? What did you do? You're right. I should I shouldn't I shouldn't sink to your level. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> for the t-shirt. Oh right? damn it, I was gonna leave you up there and I was gonna post and get it. Fuck for a t-shirt with your name on it, bud. Oh yeah? Yeah? Yeah, what's it what, what's it gonna say? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Break his face. Hey, bud, it's dark here. It's Chris. You know Chris. I know it's still light out there, but I wanted to say hi to you. You know, I told him you got to talk to my little buddy. So I want to say hi, and I want you to do me a favor. I want you to give Brody a hug for me, and and tell your mom says hey and your brother. Yep, miss you, bud. We'll see. I'll see you. I'll see you Monday. That's Ryan. Yeah, you don't know me, but you should, because I rock. I was like, hey, Chris, I'm sorry, man, I gotta tell you. I was like, that pizza kind of sucks. He goes, he springs up, he's like, what do you mean that pizza? Man, that pizza was good. I was like, no. I was like, that pizza was ass. I was like, I know the real reason why we went there. I, like, I know the real reason why we went there. He's like, what? He's like, we went there so you could talk to the girls. He goes, <laughs> he does his laugh. It's like real good. We'll work on cars and houses and shit. Oh, yeah. We are at Christian yeah. Peter's house right now. But it's not enough to make up for the stuff that's too late. I didn't even know there was another. I don't know. I did like a mix of rock and roll and cowboy. That <laughs> sick ass garage we're in here. Like, that's a steel building, man. Yeah. Well, it's a pre -core. Hey, get out of my shot. <laughs> get out of my shot. Get out of my shot. Get out of my shot. Get the fuck out of my shot. Get out. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Get the fuck out of my shot, bro. What are you doing? I'm trying to film here. Get out of my shot. Get out of my shot, bro. This is my shot. This is my shot. This is my... I claim this space. This is my shot. Get out of here. You're in my safe space. You're in my space. Get out. I'm trying to film here, damn it. Get out of here. Scram. <laughs> I think I've recorded him more with his middle finger than anything else this week. Probably. <laughs> Just everyone has it on their middle fingers. It's like, eh. Oh, yeah. I gotta go get that. I gotta just kind of like sit back and look at it. So, where'd you get some of your screen stuff? All from either profiles and history. Hey, watch where you point that thing. That thing, too. Yo, I just noticed your shirt. Oh, yeah. 